All right guys, welcome back to another video. So what I'm gonna do in today's video guys is run you through every single step that you need to follow in order to build and scale a lead gen agency, all right? Now you might be sat there thinking, I don't have a lead gen agency and I'm not interested in you know providing lead gen as a service. Well, what I wanna do is actually tell you that if you're in the B2B space, you're responsible for generating new business for your clients, full stop, okay? So regardless of whatever service you're doing, learning a model like this uh, and using it as your primary model or even using it as something that's tangential to your foundational core offer is gonna be something that is going to add considerable monthly recurring revenue to your business, okay? So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is jump into every single step here and I've laid it out beautifully on this, uh, this whiteboard here so it's gonna be easy to go through, okay? So without further ado, let's jump into the first one, all right? So the first step here in creating and scaling a successful lead gen agency is to determine your niche, all right? Now we've all heard um, and read everything online about finding the right vertical and finding the right niche. And what I'm not gonna do in this video is go into what makes you know a Grand Slam offer or how to actually select that niche. But what I am gonna do is give you some parameters that's going to enable you to separate the wheat from the chaff, okay? So you're gonna be able to separate the niches and the verticals that are actually revenue generating and where opportunities lie within, and then avoid the niches where they're oversaturated, there's too much competition and you're not gonna be able to make money, okay? So when it comes to selecting your niche, the first thing that you need to explore is the relevancy, okay? So whether you are coming from a full-time job or maybe you've had a business in the past or you've done some freelancing or contracting work, whatever it might be, use the principle of relevancy, okay? So if you have experience that is relevant and you can take that forward into a, um, you know, this business model generating leads for similar businesses, then tap into that insight that you have, okay? So if you come from the private equity world or if you come from an engineering background, whatever it might be, um, use your experience and your key skills to date because they will be immediately transferable to this niche, okay? So this is gonna answer that question of, you know, oh, I've heard solar is a good lead, uh, is a good niche, maybe I should, um, you know, create a lead gen agency in the solar niche, right? When you're making decisions like that and trying to ask yourself questions like that, avoid the niches that you have no previous exposure to and that you have no insight or knowledge about, okay? Um, it's gonna be a, a really key strategic uh, piece of kind of leverage you can use early on, all right? The second point here when looking at a niche comes down to growth. The third is liquid and the fourth is historical. So are you in a niche that's growing, all right? Don't get into a vertical or a niche that is constricting and restricting and the cash flow is um, you know, going lower. Um, you wanna be in a, a niche where everything is growing, okay? And you can use tools like Google Trends and you can use SEO tools to see what's being searched online um, and look at those you know, kind of projected growth trends, trends based on the industry or vertical that you're in, all right? Liquid, okay, liquidity comes down to the types of the companies that operate within that niche, right? So what you want to do and what you want to have exposure to as an agency owner is prospects and clients that actually have cash. They have cash between their hands, they've got cash flow, and historically they've operated for a long period of time, okay? So you want longevity in your agency, in your business, and longevity in your business is gonna come off the back of finding and working with clients and partnering with them um, who have had historical long-standing success, okay? So if your relevancy um, you know, and your insight is uh, you know, through the roof when it comes to basket weaving or whatever, pottery, whatever it might be, you then, when you go down the line, looking at these categorizations, you might think actually there's not really a huge total addressable market for pottery. Um, and actually a lot of the pottery companies aren't historical um, and they don't have any money, okay? So it's not, you know, your, your offer is really only as good as the niche and the vertical that you're operating in, all right? So number two, offer, just mentioned it. The first thing that you need to do when actually nailing your offer is do a little bit of competitor analysis, okay? So what you don't want to do as a new agency owner is reinvent the wheel, okay? You don't want to go into an industry, think that you are gonna innovate rapidly and dramatically turn the industry on its head um, and you're gonna avoid everything else that the competitors are doing, okay? Chances are, if there's competitors in the industry, that means there's money, there's cash flow, okay? And the quickest way to cash flow is to mimic what they are doing, all right? You don't have to copy their offer, um, but mimic what they are doing. Look at the timelines. Look at the price points that they um, charge their clients, all right? Use these as North Stars and as um, bookmarks for you to um, you know, create pricing for your offer, all right? The second point here comes down to the values. So I've talked about price and timeline. Look at the values that operate within the uh, marketplace. Look at what your competitors are charging. It's gonna start giving you an idea of how to price your services, all right? 
The third point here uh, regards differentiation, okay? So like I just said here, don't copy, you have to uh, mimic, you have to tap into the same veins of gold that these companies are already existing doing, and that's gonna be your quickest way to revenue. But the quickest way to um, becoming commoditized is by having no differentiation, okay? So differentiation can come from um, you as a person, you know, in your background, uh, but it's gonna come through your you know, company, your business brand, all right? And when it comes to differentiation, there's a number of different ways you can do that. You know, maybe it's just simple things. Maybe everybody in the industry in the niche that you're getting into, um, they work on 12 month minimum basis and you think that you can compete actually by, um, you know, billing a client up front, delivering a six week piece of project work and then cross selling or down selling cheaper retainer services, right? That might be a key way that you can differentiate against the competition. Okay? And that's what we did in our email agency. All right, so number three here, and, and determining your offer, we've got a tool called rate my, uh, RateMyOffer.co where we will actually rate your offer for free. So you type in your offer uh, and we will give you a score out of 28, which will show you how strong your offer is. Uh, it's based on 28 different um, data inputs and variables that actually determine how good an offer is. When I say how good an offer is, I mean how much money it's gonna make in the marketplace and how um, non-competing it is, okay? You want an offer that's not just oversaturated with you know thousands of different competitors doing the same thing, all right? Number three, pricing, okay? So this is where things get juicy. With lead gen agencies, typically there's three ways to price your services, all right? The first one is per lead, the second is a traditional monthly retainer-based agreement, and the third is a performance-based commission, okay? Now there are other ways of pricing and charging for your lead gen services, but without complicating things, these are the ways that you're gonna, in the kind of shortest amount of time, get to uh, uh, you know rev revenue generating state and maximize profit. All right. So number one per lead. Typically, this is based on the number of qualified leads that you deliver to your client. Okay, through your systems. Um, and typically, what you will bill, and this is blended across you know every single industry, every single vertical um, across continents internationally. You're going to be able to bill anywhere from twenty to two hundred dollars um, USD per lead. Okay. Yes, you can bill more. You know, if you're generating investment opportunities, um, you know, or uh, whatever it might be, you're working with private equity companies. It might be a thousand dollars per lead. It might be three thousand dollars per lead. Okay. Um, it's up to you to use your competitor analysis and look at what's happening in the marketplace to pick your price point. All right. The second option here, monthly retainers, is very straightforward, very black and white. You charge a flat monthly fee, and it's gonna be anywhere between $2,000 to $10,000 per month per client. And then the third option here is a performance commission-based payment, all right? So you're not gonna get paid anything until you actually deliver results, and in this case, it's gonna be a sale, all right? So this is largely gonna be, you know, there's variables and elements here that are out of your control, okay? You might be working with a company where you are able to generate highly qualified leads for them easily, but actually they don't have the sales infrastructure to actually close new deals all right so this typically can be a bottleneck there's ways around it um, and of course you can charge all three in one type of partnership deal all right typically if you're doing a commission only basis um, it's going to be 10 to 30 percent of the sales that you bring in through the leads that you've generated all right so once you've done your niche once you've um, chosen your offer and decided your offer pick your pricing and look what this comes down to is really two things your risk appetite and your personal preference okay you might be in a position where actually you desperately need monthly um, cash flow and you would prefer to have uh, projected income you know so that basically reduces risk for you you can plan you know everything in your business you can see what money's coming in and what's going out a monthly flat fee might be right for you or you might be operating in an industry you might have chosen and each and have a really strong offer where actually you can charge significantly higher than the average going rate per lead um, and not only that you know if you get 10 to 30 percent on the sales that you're delivering um, you know there's going to be no glass ceiling in terms of the revenue that you can generate okay so this is where you start to um, you know be in a position where you can start charging 100k per year per client for the deals that you're doing okay you start working out the maths and it starts to seem you know realistic and doable if you're selling facebook ads for 500 dollars per month or you're doing it for five percent of your clients ad spend and they're only spending a thousand dollars per month on ads obviously there's a glass ceiling to how much you can earn right you're restricted with this model you're not okay so once you've done these three things we're going to race over to sales assets now in order to actually generate leads for your agency uh, and, and equally your clients, you're gonna have to have some sales assets in place. Now sales assets is just a, an in industry jargon, um, you know, a slogan for basically having some sort of infrastructure where your um, clients can uh, find you online and get more information about your services, all right? That typically comes in the form of a landing page, okay? So don't get bogged down creating, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, website pages. Create a simple landing page and on this landing page, 
here's what you need to include. All right? You need a clear headline and a clear subheading. What you want to display on your landing page is clearly who you help. So you want to call out your ideal client profile, you know, whether it's agency owners, consultants, coaches, whatever, you know, we can help you. You want to tell them how, so you want to actually state clearly what you do. You know, we generate qualified leads through cold email and SMS, whatever it might be. Make it clear, don't overcomplicate it. You want to allude to the time frame, so whether you deliver that overnight or you do it over 90 days or 12 months, or you partner on a 24-month basis, whatever it might be, and then you want to loop in your guarantee. Okay, so we work on a performance basis, or um, you know, if we don't generate you 30 appointments per month, we you get your money back. Whatever it might be, have a have a guarantee and decide whether you want that guarantee to be conditional or unconditional. Okay, we're not going to go into the nuts and bolts of guarantees in this video. One thing you've got to make sure on your landing page that you have is a way for the prospect and your ideal client profile to actually take a next step with you. There has to be a call to action, okay? And typically what you're going to have is a button where they can book a call to um, speak to you or a member of your sales team, okay? So don't miss out. Don't forget the most important thing um, to have on your landing page, all right? Second to that, now a lot of you guys watching this won't be in a position where you've got, um, you know, you're inundated with a load of social proof. You might not have worked with clients before, okay? I'm telling you now, you do not need social proof in order to close clients, okay? When I first started my business, I had no social proof. I hadn't worked with any previous clients. And even today, having the amount of social proof that we have, case studies, reviews, testimonials, um, video testimonials, um, you'd be surprised how little case studies actually help, okay? Um, you know, especially when you're not able to really grab and, and keep the attention of your prospects, all right? So don't get hung up on social proof, all right? But if you have got social proof, whack on the logos of the companies that you've worked with as clients, and put your reviews up there, put your case studies, and clearly show, you know, the, the client before they worked with you and after, okay? Clearly show the transformation that you've delivered for them. So once you've done that, um, and, and one thing actually I'm missing out here, a, a big part is, um, I'm gonna draw an arrow, is a VSL, all right? So typically have a very simple landing page, headline, subheadline, social proof, features, whatever it might be, state your offer clearly and the transformation that you deliver, and have a VSL, okay? On the VSL, here's how you need to create your VSL, all right? Keep it simple. The VSL needs to be 10 to 20 minutes. You need to highlight your ideal client pr um, profiles pain points, so their most pressing pain points that you can solve for them. You need to run through, discuss and explore the solution. So don't pitch your solution. Talk about what the solution is to their problem. You know, maybe um, they struggle to close deals on um, Zoom calls and you provide SDRs or commission only closes or whatever it might be. Talk about how commission only closes is such an incredible risk free investment for any business, how it can increase, um, you know, call close rates by 80%, whatever it might be. But don't yet talk about that's what you're going to do for them. Okay, don't start pitching and selling. All right. Once you've talked about the solution, state the transformation. So state the transformation that you're able to deliver. Talk about the fact that, you know, um, although your prospect and the viewer is suffering from this, you know, deep, extreme pain, um, there is a solution out there. And fortunately, you're able to help them, you know, get to that solution. All right. Within that transformation statement, here's really what you need to do. You need to make your claim and state it very clearly. You need to say who it's for. We've talked about that anyway. Um, you need to allude to what your service is. Okay, so don't reinvent the wheel. Don't overcomplicate it. Tell them how you do it through cold email and SMS, whatever it might be, through graphic design. Don't let them guess. Make it easy for them scanning the video, okay? You want to talk about the benefits value stack, if there's anything on top and tangential to your core offer, you know, maybe you place sales reps into companies, but also you um, help set them up with a new CRM or, you know, get them set up on go high level and you create new logos or whatever it might be, um, value stack what you can do for them and then give them a clear CTA, okay? So tell them to book a call. The job of the VSL is not to sell them, it's to show them the transformation that you can deliver for them, okay? And it's to basically manage and set expectations for the call that you're about to have with them, all right? So don't overcomplicate it, don't spend a lot of time on this, all right? So I'm gonna move this over so you can uh, see it better, all right? So the fifth thing here is infrastructure, okay? So we've got niche, offer, pricing, sales assets, Number five is infrastructure, and I've broken infrastructure down into three core components, okay? The first is domains, the second is tools, and the third is prospecting, all right? So when it comes to doing B2B lead gen, primarily you're gonna do that through two core channels. The first one is gonna be cold email, and the second one is likely to be LinkedIn, okay? It's where most B2B reps and, and decision makers are um, gathering as an audience, okay? So when it comes to B2B lead gen um, and cold email specifically, you have to set up your sending infrastructure, okay? So you have to buy domains, and what we recommend is typically 10, eight to 10 domains. 
on each domain, you need to have two to three individual users. Um, you obviously have to go through a warming process, um, but before you've done that, you want to set up your DNS. Okay, so everything that will set up your domains from a technical deliverability uh, standpoint, you need to get in place first. Okay, there's a million one guides online about how to set up your DMARC, your SPF, forwarding, IMAP, MX records. Okay, this video is not for that. You can literally Google it. How do I set up DMARC for my, um, you know, Google email, Gmail accounts? All right. The second one here is um, tools, okay? So when it comes to cold email, there's really only two leading tools that exist in the marketplace today. Uh, we recommend and use Instantly, have used it for literally since Instantly um, launch, which I think was about five years ago, six years ago. Um, we've used it since then. Um, an alternative here is Smart Lead. A lot of individuals try and use Smart Lead. Um, again, don't overthink it. Pick one, choose Instantly. There's a reason that it's the leading tool in the marketplace. And then what you want to do is sync your domains to your ESP, your email sending um, tool, all right? Again, very, very easy, instantly has 100 different guides on there about how to do that, all right? The third point here when it comes to your key infrastructure is lead gen, okay, specifically prospecting. Now, what you want to be able to do as a lead gen agency is access audiences, access databases with millions of B2B um, data points on them, okay? You want millions of uh, B2B contacts that not only you can go to market to and do outreach to to try and close its clients, but that you can actually use the same systems for to generate the leads and uh, prospect for the clients that you've onboarded, all right? Again, don't overcomplicate it, okay? There's a million and one different uh, B2B lead uh, lead gen databases or B2B uh, databases online and available. Again, we've used Apollo. Um, Apollo has, um, you know, the data's pretty pretty well verified. Um, there's a lot of data. It's continually being added to. We don't use Apollo for anything else other than scraping leads, okay? You can send emails, um, but we don't do that. It's not good for deliverability, all right? If you are on a low budget and you can't afford to uh, export credits and export contacts from Apollo or other B2B databases, there are tools to get around this, okay? So what we've used in the past is a tool called Find Email, um, and what you're able to do through Find Email's Chrome extension is actually export contacts, export lines of data from uh, B2B databases like Apollo, and do that practically for a set monthly price of Find Email, okay? So it's, it's kind of like doing it for free because when you're using a, a B2B database like Apollo, um, not only do you have to pay a monthly fee for the platform, you're also gonna have to pay for credits, export credits, okay? So the more leads that you export, the more you're gonna have to pay. A tool like Find Email helps you get around that. But again, 101 other tools exist, okay? So don't, you know, shop around if you want, but again, don't waste time on it, okay? Pick Find Email um, and use it, and uh, yeah, drop me a comment below to, to let me know if you've used it before. All right, racing on here, number six. So when it comes to actually delivering the service, or equally going out and doing outreach for your own lead gen agency, it all comes down to the campaigns that you are running. And what's really important to understand when it comes to campaigns and campaign goals is that the goal isn't to sell, the goal isn't to pitch, the goal is not to close, all right? The goal of cold email and outreach campaigns is to generate engagement. Now you might be thinking, um, you know, well all I get is a negative reply. And what I wanna tell you is that positive or negative engagement is the goal, okay? So the fact that the prospect has um, responded to you negatively and not positively shows that they have some sort of level of engagement that they're willing to give you. They're, they are willing and um, you know, voting with their time, they're willing to give you their attention, all right? I have had clients, uh, prospects that I've turned into clients who have uh, verbally, well, in writing as well, abused me. They have uh, accused me of making mistakes in my cold email outreaches to them, like getting their brand names wrong and things like that when I actually haven't. Um, and I have continued to persevere with those clients and actually ended up closing them, okay? So one was a, um, a huge brand in the UK um, and I got directly through to the CEO founder. Um, I spelt their brand na name, how they spell it on their website and he came back to me, fired off an email and said, you know, you're terrible, you're awful, I'd never work with you, you can't even get our brand name right. All right, I put my ego aside, um, I followed up, the prospect's always right, um, and I, I, you know, brought forward a positive mental, you know, perspective and attitude to it and I actually converted that prospect um, and collected 36K from them, cash collective, right? So I wanna tell you here again, I want to reiterate that engagement is the goal, okay? Don't get disheartened by negative responses. Um, the worst response is no response, okay? Now when it comes to your campaign specifically, 
What you want to remember is that simple scales and fancy fails, and that applies to everything that you do in business, all right? So keep your email simple. Make sure that your subject lines are brief. You want to keep the body copy of the email at least one to two sentences, at least at most one to two sentences. Use basic personalization, okay? So at the moment, AI and you know leveraging um, uh, OpenAI's API and, and uh, doing as much you know AI-based personalization is what's being pushed online, okay? But I promise you the majority of the guys that are pushing strategies like that online aren't actually using it to get clients from their business. You're probably their client, okay? They're probably only getting clients inbound, all right? When it comes to cold email, you have to make it human, all right? And people reply, humans reply to humans, all right? And although AI is advanced and it's going to get even more complex and advanced, you know, as we go through the months and years um, coming up, at the moment, leveraging your humanity and your uh, personal authenticity is one of the easiest and simplest and quickest way to cut through the noise, all right? So there's a million and one other teenagers out there trying to leverage AI over personalizing their emails, getting it wrong, making it sound like a robot's, um, you know, writing the email and they're not getting the engagement, okay? They're not getting open rates, they're not getting clicks um, and they're not converting any of their prospects into uh, calls, all right? So keep it simple, leverage basic personalization, bring in a pattern interrupt and a pattern interrupt can simply be something, so typically a pattern interrupt is something that grabs the attention of your prospect, all right? If you email them with an offer um, and you're in a niche that's oversaturated and your pricing is the same and your copy is the same, chances are they're not going to reply to you, okay? But if you, even if you have a, a generic, you know, infrastructure behind you like that, implementing certain pattern interrupts can work still to build engagement, right? So simply what we've done over the last six years is um, grammatical errors, you know, things like writing a subject line and not starting it with an uppercase letter. Um, you know, having things in the body copy that represent or kind of refre reflect more, um, more a situation of likelihood where it's been me, you know, sat on the toilet firing off a quick email. I've made spelling mistakes. I haven't, I haven't formatted it correctly um, and I haven't put in a, a link or an image or anything like that. You know, those are the emails that get the highest response rates, okay? Again, Relevancy is a point I've put here. Um, you want to keep your outreach messages relevant, okay? So make the prospect who's reading the email understand within a split second that this is an email they should be reading, okay? So don't guff it up, don't cloud it out, don't put in a load of you know fluff that's gonna make it super you know um, hard for them to comprehend. State clearly who you are, what you do, and what you can deliver for them, all right? Now, when it comes to managing campaigns, the real effectiveness of your campaigns lies in the back end, okay? So you have to reply. So when you get a reply, you want to minimize the time it takes for you to reply back. Now, if you've got inbox managers, which we talk about here in a moment under operations, they're the individuals, VAs that will do it for you. But if you're managing campaigns yourself or you're doing outreach as a founder, as a CEO for your own company, make sure you reply and make sure that when you reply, you make the CTA and the goal outcome of that reply easy for your prospect okay so do not go back to them and say you know if they've come back to you and said oh this is kind of interesting whatever yeah i'm kind of interested and um, they've come back neutrally to you or semi-positively don't go back to them and say that's great here's my calendar link for you to book a call with me okay don't put don't put the onus on the prospect to do the work for you, okay? It's your job to get them on a call, all right? And again, if you're a single CEO founder, you're gonna to have to do this yourself, put your ego aside and do the manual admin work yourself. Book them in a call, give them a specific time. You know, great, I've got a slot that's open at 2 p.m. today, okay to call you then, what's the best mobile number to catch you on? All right, make it easy for them to reply, okay? So, moving quickly on, we're almost on to the last point here and hopefully you can see what I've written here. Number seven is operations, okay? So when it comes to actually creating and launching, scaling a lead gen agency, you've gotta make sure that you've got operations in place that will enable you to scale your time, okay? Your time and energy is limited. You wanna be focusing on revenue generating activities. You don't wanna be bogged down in the minutia and doing all the admin, okay? It's gonna kill your, uh, it's gonna kill your vision actually at the end of the day. Um, and it's gonna really be a direct bottleneck to stop you from scaling, okay? So when it comes to managing cold email campaigns and, and maybe you're, um, you know, you've gone omni-channel as well and you're delivering LinkedIn as a service too, you wanna to make sure that you have an inbox manager. And these inbox managers are gonna be VAs that basically sit monitoring your um, inboxes on instantly, 
are on smart lead and they respond immediately, okay? On instantly, you can set up sub, sub sequences. Oftentimes, a sub sequence is a email response that will um, send automatically based on a specific trigger that the email reply has that you've received, okay? So if they re reply positively, instantly we'll categorize that and you can actually ping off a sub sequence saying, you know, great, blah, 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 whatever, all right? But the sooner you can actually send a personalized message back, the better, all right? Speed to lead and using an inbox manager, you can pay inbox managers, you know, um, uh, uh, not a, a huge amount, you know, you can pay them, pay them a fair rate uh, to manage a process that's actually integral to success with this model, all right? Second to inbox managers, you can start to think about when you're starting to scale, when you've built up your monthly recurring revenue, you can think about hiring copywriters. You know, if you're operating in an industry, maybe you're in the financial niche, maybe you're in the medical healthcare niche, maybe you need expertise within your copy and writing capabilities, that's when you might be able to bring in a copywriter, okay? The copywriters can generally be largely ignored. The best campaigns we've ever written have come from myself. I'm the person that knows my business the best and the closest, um, and I've never, I've never found that outsourcing that to a copywriter, however much we paid for them, has actually resulted in better um, engagement rates for us, okay? So where was I? Uh, when it comes to key stuff, really, what's gonna be the biggest play for you is leveraging human capital when it comes to setters, all right? So if you bring on a commission only setter, you're not gonna to have to pay them a monthly rate. They're only gonna get paid on results. And what you're gonna to need to do is basically set some start targets for them, okay? So targets wise, here's what we kind of blanket recommend as an agency, 100 to 200 DMs per day, all right? So maybe that's a LinkedIn message, maybe it's on Twitter, wherever you found your leads, wherever they're hanging out on socials, utilize that platform and get your setters to message them on those native platforms, all right? You wanna make sure that your setters are following up, okay? So typically you're gonna need seven to nine follow-up touch points with any prospect, however positive they are, you know, however much they kind of know you. Um, you're gonna need seven to nine kind of conversational touch points with them before they actually have the trust to um, purchase from you, all right? Now that is the, the kind of rule that's not the exception. You know, you can close clients and, and they hardly know you and you speak to them twice. Um, maybe it takes 50 times over six months, all right? But generally the rule is seven to nine touch points. So you want to make sure that to build those touch points and get those notches, um, you know, on, on, on your belt, so to speak, your setters are following up. Okay, so 100 to, 100 to 200 DMs, DMs per day to new prospects, 50 follow ups per day. And then what you want to shoot for is basically your setters sending out five to 10 calendar links or manually setting um, and asking for a call with a view to booking one to two calls per day. Okay, so these are kind of medium conservative targets that, um, you know, if you're sort of starting out, you're looking to scale your Legion agency, these are good ones to shoot for, right? If you're hiring a commission only setter, give them these targets, all right? And then the, the final point here is CRM. Okay, so this is kind of a, a you know, a, a secondary point here. But what you want to make sure is that you're using a tool like Go High Level. You've got a tool, um, a CRM that was going to help you manage prospects, it's going to help you track leads. It's gonna help you project cash flow, and it's gonna help you set goals, all right? If you don't have goals when it comes to the monthly recurring revenue you want to generate with your Legion agency, you have no North Star um, to shoot for, okay? You have no route to take, you have no path forward that's clear, all right? And clarity is what's gonna give you the, the steps and the focus that you need in order to actually build this business, all right? So hopefully this, uh, this video has been helpful. Let me know what you've uh, thought about it in the comments. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss these videos. Put these techniques uh, and this model into practice and drop me a comment below to uh, let me know how you've gotten on. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.